Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Adam from RM Marketing and Estimator Tools coming at you live on Facebook and on YouTube. Um, we had a unique question, at least what I thought was a unique question, in our VIP group yesterday, and it was surrounding the invoicing within Go High Level, which is a feature that I don't use super often because a lot of my stuff is built in Stripe as subscription models. But invoicing is a super powerful tool. And so I took a deep dive in this last night to try to figure out, hey, what are all of the things that you can do with invoicing inside High Level? And there's a lot of things that you can probably pretty easily miss if you don't know what to look for. So in this video, we're going to dive into invoicing, kind of all of the different things that you can do with it. Um, and there's a lot more than I thought. And so it actually becomes a much more powerful tool than I originally thought once you know what you're looking for. So I was also told on a comment in a previous YouTube video that I talk too fast and I go through things too fast. So I'm going to do my absolute best to slow this down and go step by step so that it's easy for you guys to understand. I just get really excited about this stuff. So sometimes I talk really quickly. So let's dive in to invoicing and show you guys how you can set up um, a couple of really cool automations based off of invoicing that I didn't know existed until yesterday. So we're going to dive in. Let's go. Okay. So under payments, if you've got your Stripe account or you've got authorized.net, things like that set up, you can create your own invoices. So the first thing that I would recommend that anybody does is come into settings and set up all of your invoice template information. So this is your terms and notes in your footer. So if you wanted to add terms like I'm in Canada, so an example would be, we do a lot of email money transfers, which saves us on Stripe fees and it saves us on a whole bunch of other stuff. So I would put instructions in there that if I was sending it to a Canadian client, that they could e-transfer me money and I don't have to pay the Stripe fees and so on and so forth. Um, so little terms and notes that you want to make on your invoices that are going to be attached to every invoice um, are going to go right in this section here. Now, this is not something that I played with, but I wanted to show you guys where this was. Um, you will, by default, be sending the default text messages and emails when you send invoices. But what you can do is you can go into marketing and you can go into email templates and you can build your own HTML email templates for um, invoice received, payment successful, payment failed. Um, all of these you can set up your own SMS and email templates for. But if you choose not to do that, the default ones from high level, in my opinion, are perfectly fine. Um, super simple, uh, but you can create templates for all of these things. Um, and you can turn these things on or off. Now, what I'm also going to show you inside workflows is kind of how you can build this stuff out yourself manually through workflows as well. So first thing that I would do is I would go into your settings and I would set all of this stuff up. Now, I am going to, I'm going to go to workflows first and then we're going to come back here and I'm going to show you guys how you can set up the invoices yourself. Um, but let's go into workflows here real quick and let's go into all of the different functionality. And I'm going to show you the first thing that we noticed um, is that if you don't trigger this properly, you lose a lot of functionality. So I'm actually going to delete this trigger, which is the invoice sent trigger, and I'm going to hit save. Now, one thing that you'll notice is that if you don't have the invoice trigger in there and you try to send an email, or a text message, whatever the case may be, and you go to write something in here, you won't have custom fields available to you for the invoice because the invoice was not the trigger. Um, and there's a couple of different things inside High Level that do this, things like membership, um, signups, and things like that. If you do not have that as the trigger, you don't get those options. Um, and so that was the first problem that we had to solve yesterday in the VIP call was to figure out, hey, if I send an invoice, how do I get all that information into an email? Well, the answer is actually a lot more simple than you would think. And that is literally just create your trigger as an invoice sent. So the way that you would want to do this is with a two-step workflow, right? So you've got your invoice sent. Um, and then if you save that trigger and we go into an email again, you will now have additional custom values for all of the invoice values that you can have inside the system, um, which now makes this 
super convenient and we can do a lot of things with it. And so the first thing that I wanted to show you was, you know, creating an event start date time. Um, so because again, you have this invoice as your trigger, you now have the ability, actually, before I do this, I should save this because I added this back in. You now have the ability to grab custom date fields from that invoice. So you can go down here, go to invoice, and then do your custom due date. So you would start your workflow with that due date because now you can send payment reminders and things like that, just like you would with appointment reminders for the invoice. Now, the other thing, so we had to do kind of trick the system here a little bit, uh, but you'll notice that if we update the opportunity, we've got invoice total price here. Um, if I just get rid of that, you don't actually have that option here um, to set that invoice total price in the opportunity field. So what we did to hack that system a little bit is that we just created this email. And inside this email, we have all of the different values and totals that we need. Um, and then we went and we just found the invoice total. So invoice total price and copied this right here and put that into the opportunity field right there. Um, so that's how you can get your opportunity values to show up with your invoice total um, inside your opportunity section. So that's a quick little hack. Now I want to go through and obviously when you have a, you know, you've got your due date here, you can now start to create automations around it. So if you wanted to create a wait step, you can now create the wait step based off of an event or appointment time. So we've got the event set here and now we can start sending notifications before X amount of days, uh, before the invoice expires and whatnot. Um, and you can now start to create that appointment reminder or payment reminder type sequence um, if things do get past due. Um, and you can kind of work your way through that with the wait steps once you have the event start time set. Um, so just to give you a couple of ideas. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna show you guys what all of these things do. So I'm actually going to go out of this thing and I'm going to add myself back into it by creating an invoice. So let's go to payments and let's go and create an invoice. Now there's a couple things here. Um, by default, you will be able to use products that you have inside your system, um, inside these invoices. You can not use recurring um, invoice products unless you choose the recurring template. So you do have those two options. This is a one-time payment. These are recurring payments through invoices. Now, again, if you're using a SaaS model, I wouldn't recommend using recurring invoices because I want that money in my account on the same day every single month. Um, and so I wouldn't use the recurring template for that kind of stuff. I would literally just get them to sign up or create the subscription inside my Stripe account so that I don't have to worry about chasing down invoices. Now, there are some businesses where they might require you to do something like a net 30 type payment option. And so that's where you would be able to create that recurring invoice for your SaaS subscription models um, or even some of your agency models. But um, in this case, let's go to send a new invoice. So I don't have any of my settings in this kind of preset. Um, so one thing that you'll have to do is upload your logo. This is also something that you can set um, by default. So I'm gonna go into some relocated items and I'm gonna get my logo. Um, that's gonna put it all up there. And then you have to select your client. So I'm just gonna obviously bill myself here. And then you can add an item to your invoice. Now you can do existing products. So if I come in here and I select an existing product, so maybe somebody wants to buy you know, our agency licenses, like our lifetime license, or maybe they want to buy our VIP program, which is a monthly subscription. So I can't do that. Let's just go with this. So uh, lifetime licenses for um, estimator tools, you're going to save that. And that's going to add the product to here. But what if you have a custom invoice that you want to send somebody um, that doesn't have a dedicated product that you're trying to sell? Well, you can click here and add new item. You can give the product a name. So let's just go uh, VIP superior package. And it's a digital product. We're just going to go V I'm just going to make this easy VIP package. And we are going to say that this is a one-time charge of 1997. Now you can click this save for you to lace, which you, Oh my goodness, later use. Um, so that this will now become a product 
um, that you will have access to in the drop down menu. But in this case, I'm not going to do that. We can go add new item. Now you can also come here and you can add discounts. So you can add a discount as a percentage. So let's say I wanted to give somebody 15% off, hit save. Now that's going to create that discount for you. And in the settings, so this is where your notes and terms are accessible to you inside the actual invoice itself. If you have your settings done, which I didn't do, this will be preset already and ready to go for you. Now let's uh, let's go ahead and send this and I'll show you guys kind of what, what all happens here. So let's go send. You can choose email and or text. So I'm just going to send the invoice to both. There we go. Now let me go up here and grab my email so I can show you what comes through. All right, so this is the default email that your clients are gonna get when you send them an invoice. So it's gonna have your logo that you plugged in, the invoice information, um, and a, a link to actually go and pay that invoice. Um, so it's super convenient, just super clean. I kind of prefer this myself. Um, saves me a lot of time having to go and build an HTML email on this. Um, so I don't. I actually don't mind this structure here. But what you can do, I want to show you all of the information that you get in that email. So you get the contact name, the currency that is being charged, the invoice date. So this would actually be the due date of the invoice. Um, total discount 15, which is a percentage. So there's a couple of things that you might want to add to that email to make it look a little bit more professional. The date that it was issued was today. Um, invoice mode is live, is true. So again, I, I don't know if I would send that to somebody. Um, who was the sender? Who's the sender's email? Invoice status is sent. Invoice subtotal, discount, invoice number. As you can see, I don't use this very often. I've only sent 12. Um, and then total price. Now, this link right here is going to be the exact same link that is in the button right here. So if you wanted to create your own HTML email for invoices, you can just use this link right here in a button. So let's just go back into the automation and I'll show you what that link is. It's just, I think it's invoice, contact.invoice underscore URL um, is what that one is. And we've got high level doing high level -y things. Now, while we wait for high level to do some high level -y things here, um, if you're watching this right now, please let me know. Just shoot a comment, um, whether you're on Facebook or on YouTube. And I just like to know. I like to know who's watching these things. I like to know that these are valuable. So if you're watching it live, let me know. If you're watching it on the replay and you're finding this valuable, please also let me know. So here you go, invoice.url. So we're not actually doing anything with contact. We're doing invoice. Uh, but you can use this as a button link destination inside an HTML email um, if you ever wanted to do that. So you could create your own emails to look very similar to high levels um, like this and have all uh, just a little bit more data and information on what they're paying for with their new invoice. So that's pretty much it, guys. You can get creative now and start creating invoice workflows. Now, there's another trigger for invoices. Um, and let's just go invoice again. And you want to do invoice paid. Now, you would obviously want to do this in a separate workflow so that when the invoice gets paid, you remove them from the invoice sent workflow. Um, and then you can add tags and you can update opportunities to close one and you can start to track your total um, invoice paid values and things like that using pipelines and, and all of that fun stuff. So um, hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully I went slow enough and hopefully you guys can now take invoices to a different level, either for your own agency or for your clients. So again, comments. Let me know if this was helpful. I always like to know. Um, and I want to keep on doing more stuff like this for you guys. So if you've got questions, please ask whether that's on YouTube or in the GHL Mastery Facebook group. Um, I'm here to help you guys grow and excel within the high-level platform. So with that being said, we'll see you on the next one. Take care.